Welcome. In a moment, you will meet someone who will take you on a mysterious journey from all over the world. From all over the world. From the world. From the world. From the world. From the world. Gentlemen, please welcome. Welcome to this edition of the Biker Angle. But before we begin, Welcome to this edition of the Biker Angle. It is 925 of 2018. Today we're going to be tackling a subject that was quite a debate over at the, the Biker Life group over on Facebook. That one's ran by Brian DeBall. He's actually going to be on Motorcycle Madhouse uh, later this week. And uh, we're going to talk about his group. Uh, Brian's a real good guy, friend of the show. And a real good guy. But the debate had to do with swastikas in the biker lifestyle. And at the end of the video, you're actually going to see... Uh, yesterday we put out uh, the police uh, profiling stuff on the Vagos and shit like that. Well, we actually got the video of the cop holding up the gun. Got the guys against the wall. The whole nine freaking yards. I need to see what happened uh, right before that other video we put up, but it has to do with swastikas and Nazi uh, regalia and stuff like that, a uh, huge debate over on his uh, Facebook group, and you can really tell, <laughs> you really can, who the rubs are, who the new school fucking generation is compared to the older guys. You really could. You just see it coming out. Actually, when we started sharing that video, because one of the guys was wearing one of the Nazi uh, swastikas on his uh, cut, you know, you started having all these people coming out, well, you know, screw them any damn way. They're wearing a Nazi symbol and shit like that. So it really didn't matter that they were being police profiled. It just mattered that they were wearing a damn swastika. But... Let's give you a little motorcycle history here about the Swazi. <laughs> you know, I'm going to first give you the mainstream media's outlook on it, and then I'll give you the real outlook on it. Uh, this came from Slate. It was titled Highway to Heil. Uh, it, it was actually disgusting because I took some of, out, some of it out for time for this video, but it was discussed in uh, that old controversy that was going on with Jesse James when he was with that uh, Sandra Bullock and shit. Uh, when he was in that Halloween costume and everybody was up in fucking arms. But uh just shows you how much PC people really are out there. How they'll equate bikers to, uh, you know, white supremacy and shit like that. And that couldn't be further from this truth. Because before I do get in the article... There is a lot of old school clubs and a lot of mixed race clubs that have that as their symbol. You know, the Chinglings being one of the freaking uh, obvious ones, you know, they're all, they're a melting pot in there. And it's even funnier when these assholes go off and talk about this kind of shit. You got Jews, you got whites, you got blacks, you got Mexicans that are fucking wearing the symbol. And all it was was to keep the fucking citizens away from everybody. So you got to remember, in the 60s, during Vietnam and shit, you had all those little hipsty, hipster uh, tree-hugging motherfucking uh, college protesters running around, spitting on our guys coming home from Vietnam. <laughs> so... They used the symbol and the regalia to keep the little pricks away, and it was mostly for intimidation. It wasn't about racism or any of that kind of crap to them, or a lot of them today. Like I said, you got chingalings wearing the stuff, and you got a lot of blacks wearing the symbol. But uh, let's hear what uh, Slate had to say, and you'll roll your eyes like I did through the whole fucking thing. Uh, 
That might be true if this were 1969. Anyone who read Hunter Thompson's Hell's Angels seen older biker movies like The Glory Stompers in 1968 knows that biker gangs would sometimes wear swastikas or iron crosses. Iron crosses are still popular today. Uh, a German decoration during World War II. Actually, it wasn't a decoration. Uh, iron crosses were medals and fucking, they were on flags and on their country shit. Uh, the most popular being uh, the German flag. But Nazi symbolism is less common among bikers than it used to be, says Tom Barker, a professor of criminal justice at Eastern Kentucky University who studies motorcycle gangs. You notice all these freaking uh, people that they get for these interviews are these professors or these elite fucking assholes. They never really actually go to the source. Maybe because they're chicken shits. I don't know. It's really unusual, quote, says Barker. Biker gangs used to roam American highways with all kinds of Nazi insignia. Swastikas, iron crosses, SS-style lightning bolts, steel helmets, peak casts, but that stuff has gone out of fashion in the last decade or two, says Barker. The main reason? Marketing. That's what they attribute it to. A motorcycle organization like the Hells Angels and the Banditos and Outlaws have established chapters across the world, including Germany, where Nazi symbols are illegal. Talk about not having a First Amendment right, man. I, you know what? The cultures are so different around the world. Uh, but anyway, they've toned down the regalia. At the same time, the Hells Angels, and then he got sarcastic like a little prick freaking tree hugger would. Sorry, the Hells Angels Motorcycle Corp. You know, you, you imagine that asshole fucking saying that to one of the 81s to their face? He'd get a fucking dotted eye. Anyway have become a profitable business selling merchandising and trademarking their logo. When Disney, <laughs> this asshole brings this up, when Disney used a similar looking image in the movie Wild Hogs, the Angels filed suit. Well, it's because it's their property. Uh, there's always been a connection between motorcycle gangs and white supremacy. Now that is some bullshit. None of the major um, American gangs, Hells Angels, Banditos, Outlaws, Moggles, and Pagans, are said to allow black people to become members. And then he got in that little parenthesis bullshit. There's an occasional reported exception. So if there's an exception, then they allow it, right? Anyway. Although some have begun to recruit Latinos, much shit, that goes back to the 60s and even before, so they might want to update their little their information, don't you think? And some members sport tattoos that explicitly endorse white power, like the W and the P. On the back of uh, Michelle McGee's legs, some chapters of the Hells Angels have reportedly linked up with neo-Nazis. You see where the fucking shit, I think this is, uh... It has to be somebody from that uh, Poverty Law Center bullshit. Uh, but most bikers, Nazi iconography has less to do with supporting Nazi ideology than wanting to piss people off, says Barker. Modern American motorcycle gangs started in the late 40s and the 50s, just after veterans, veterans of World War II brought home iron crosses and trophies. One percenters so named in response to the claim that 99% of bikers are law-abiding. And you know what? That is actually funny, man. That law-abiding shit. We actually got uh, a comment that a fucking blow your freaking mind off of Facebook yesterday on our uh, one of our posts. It was just freaking amazing, man. I, you know what? I had a freaking laugh my ass off when I seen it. Uh, I'll go into it in a second. Uh, let's keep on going here. Uh, this stuff, Iron Crosses, the Nazi uh, insignia, the German helmets, that's to shock people, which basically has a right right there to let them know we're individualist. Hells Angels uh, icon Sonny Barger told Los Angeles Times in the 60s, 
if a Hells Angels guy is wearing Nazi par paraphernalia, it's basically their equivalent of sticking up the finger to some middle class family they see in a bobo. <laughs> you gotta love Sonny with that shit, man. He never mixed words freaking Sonny, man. <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, will we <laughs> uh in the Hells Angels uh Thompson argues that paraphernalia was mostly the epiter la bigasso. They insist and seem to believe that their swastika fetish is no more than an anti social joke, a guaranteed gimmick to bug the squares, the taxpayers, all those they spitefully refer to as citizens. And that's basically where it comes down to. So, <laughs> uh, then they go in, they talk about, uh, you know, that big, yeah, everybody has to remember that incident with uh, Jesse James when it was like a big freaking deal in there. But here's what this freaking idiot had to say on Facebook. Uh, he goes to say, profiling is a good way for police to find people that are breaking the law. If you're not, then you have nothing to worry about and will be on your way. I get profiled all the time because of my tattoos and I'm a law-abiding citizen. I have nothing to worry about. Oh my God. <laughs> and this is supposed to be a freaking uh, a biker. So... You know, yeah, and then the comments, everybody's hitting him right now, which they should be because he's a dick licker right there, man. He needs to go ride a, one of the cops' baloney ponies, man. I'm telling you, that's my new thing, a baloney pony. That's what these fucking cops are. So, but the swastika, you know, it doesn't have to do with being white supremacists and shit like that. Yeah, you might have some that are like that, but the truth is it was a shock factor, and you got people still today that uh, do this shit. But does that make them racist? No. Does uh, members of the Chinglings or black make them racist because they're wearing a Swazi? No. But you find more and more how politically correct people really are, man. And this lifestyle is, you got a lot of mix of rubs coming in this motherfucker, man. I thought the 1990s were bad when they first started coming in, in the mid-90s. Nowadays, it's like goddamn pussyfied, this fucking lifestyle. And it's a freaking shame, man, because it used to be all about beers, broads, and bikes. And now it's about, let's hold our hand, let's go fucking to the next local parade. Instead of going out to the fucking woods, pounding some pussy, having a fucking go all out fucking type of deal. And it's just sad. It really is. When you have arguments like that happening and Facebook groups about, uh, you know, Swazis and shit like that. Because I think what happened that started the argument was it was an old freaking vintage fucking photo of a guy uh, sitting in front of his bike and uh, the Nazi flag in the background, you know. And it's even becoming that kind of bullshit, how pussyfied it is, is with uh, the Confederate flag right now. You know, the rebel flag. And <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. And yeah, you can see, actually, you know, here, here, let me uh, span the camera right there in the corner. I always have my fucking Confederate flag up there, but that don't mean I'm goddamn racist, man. Uh, you know, that's just the fucking mainstream media bullshit out there talking. But, you know, let me know your uh, comments in the comments section below of what you think of all this bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good discussion. Let's see if uh, we can get one going over here like we did over on the Facebook one. Uh, but also, we got news out yesterday. We've been covering uh, this story forever. Uh, the Banditos uh, Motorcycle Club second in command. Uh, let's see here. It goes on to say, directed to biker groups, violent uh, racketeering enterprise. Including drug dealing, extortion, beatings, and murder. Uh, Portillo, basically, he was a national. He was the former national vice president of the Banditos. He's 58. Uh, he's been in the club since the 80s. Uh, gave him two consecutive life sentences from racketeering, murder, plus 10 years 
on each of the two charges of using a, or discharging a gun in furtherance of racketeering. <clears throat> and stack those as well. The sentence will run concurrent with the five years to 20 years for Patillo's remaining nine counts. That included racketeering, conspiracy, murder conspiracy, extortion conspiracy, assault conspiracy, being a felon with a gun, and drug charges. Given an opportunity to speak, Portillo, still reeling from what he feels was a wrongful conviction, said he planned to appeal. Quote, what would you like me to say, Portillo asked the judge. The judge said he could, could assert his innocence if he'd like. And he goes, quote, and you know what, this is an old schooler right here, man, you can tell. Uh, he goes, quote, I think we're beyond that, end quote. What was done was done. I'm not going to apologize. A, only a guilty man apologizes. I'm innocent. You know, and that's some hardcore shit right there, man. That's what the old boys used to do. Not like nowadays when, you know, half of these fucking guys get into some shit they know that the game is and what the outcomes can be and next thing you know they're out there ratting on everybody uh then it goes on to say despite portillo's association with the banditos ezra said he conducted himself appropriately like a gentleman at trial the judge said it was obvious portillo was not happy with the result of his case but he's still a bright guy who could take advantage of prison reform programs <laughs> really <laughs> Quote, I don't think you should go to the Supermax Institution, Israel said. I'm going to be recommending against that strongly. I don't think you're an inherently violent person. I don't think you present an immediate danger to other prisoners. Don't prove me wrong. <laughs> he can really take advantage of prison reform programs. You just gave the fucking guy two fucking life sentences plus 20 years. I don't think he's going to really give a shit about fucking uh, prison reform <laughs> programs. Uh, both Portillo and Pike were convicted in a, after a three-month federal trial in San Antonio of ordering and sanctioning uh, racketeering conspiracy that aimed at keeping the biker club stronghold on its turf in Texas. The trial showed that the Banditos, once the second largest biker club in the world behind the Hells Angels split off from its international chapters in Europe and Australia because of turmoil in its ranks. So, then it goes on to talk about uh, the shootout occurred while Portillo and Pike were at the helm of the Banditos. Neither Pike or Portillo were there uh, at the shootout. Uh, the incident resulted in nine bikers, blah, 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 blah. But you can see the coverage that uh, the mainstream media has on uh, bikers and shit like that. And that's why guys like me and, and, and you know, Insane Throttle is out there trying to get the club side of things out. Because uh, the mainstream media is never going to do it. You know, let's just face it, they're never going to do it. So, but let's take a look at this uh, video now of uh, inside of Wilson's leather <laughs> and you'll see you know the gun up in the background the whole nine yards and shit like that but take a look at this video let me know what you think in the comments section below I also want to thank uh, Long Rider he's a great supporter of the channel love you man you're awesome and uh, I want to thank everybody else out there for supporting the channel as well it's really growing and, you know, Insane Throttles rocking and rolling out there. Really appreciate it. Uh, the book, of course, is fucking rocking and rolling. Uh, like yesterday, I showed you all the stats and shit like that. But thanks, guys, for everything. You guys mean a lot. And uh, this Saturday, 9 a.m., we're going to have a live stream. We're going to be talking about uh, these RC clubs who try to pass themselves off as RC clubs, but they're really acting like motorcycle clubs just to uh, circumvent the process of uh, protocol and shit like that. But thanks for joining us today. Check out the video. Tell me what you think. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.